Dean ISD has been duly called and that notice of meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Section 551.043 of the Texas Government Code. Uh, Mr. Guetta, if you'll lead us with our pledges to the United States flag and our Texas flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Thank everybody for coming out tonight, and I'd like to turn over now to Dr. Matthew Gutierrez for his announcements. Good evening, Matador Nation. On July the 13th, the Facilities Planning Committee met for the fourth time this summer and identified priorities as we move forward to address growth, aging facilities, and safe schools. Following a board workshop on July 19th, the district may consider a bond election in November. We will explore the opportunity further during a special meeting on August the 4th. I appreciate the community members who volunteered to serve on the Facilities Planning Committee to share their valuable input. Tomorrow we are hosting our third Safety Task Force meeting. The task force has been extremely productive by providing feedback and ideas on our current safety protocols and recommendations for future safety initiatives. We shared their top recommendations with the community last week in a thought exchange that has garnered over 8,000 ratings and almost 600 thoughts. We will review the thought exchange results with the task force tomorrow evening and use the recommendations as we plan for back to school and beyond. Our first summer of ACE programming concludes on Thursday and based upon student participation, our efforts are a success. ACE offered fun and interactive learning opportunities to help bring our students up to speed and recover from COVID learning loss. A big thank you to our staff and summer ACE instructors for creating this learning opportunity for our students. Thank you to Ms. Duncan and Mr. Amador for taking time out of your schedules to visit our ACE classrooms yesterday at Botline. It's hard to believe, but by the time we get together for our August 23rd regular board meeting, we will be one week into the new school year. I hope our students and staff continue to enjoy the summer break, and I look forward to seeing our students back in action on August the 15th. We have board member reports up next, and Mr. Amador will start with you with this one. Okay, well, I had many personal appointments and meetings. I did manage to attend a couple of school functions, and one of them was the workshop to discuss the bond and facilities planning, and then it was stated I went to Podline yesterday and saw the summer ACE program in full swing. I saw second and third graders participate in the social and emotional learning, and they actually taught me quite a bit. I hope to go there or somewhere soon again. Yes, I went off and left my phone at home where I keep all of my copious notes about what I do. So I went off the top of my head, and this is what I can remember in two minutes. I attended the facility planning final meeting and also the board workshop pertaining to the possible bond election. Also completed that safety and security training through TEA and along with Mr. Amador, we toured uh, the ACE program at Potline yesterday, and it was just wonderful to see all the, they were really engaged and they could explain to us what they were doing, and so kudos to the ACE program and, and the after school, or summer school program. 
I too attended the facilities committee, the final uh, committee meeting that they had, uh, and came back the following week and attended the board workshop where they presented their final uh, draft to us. And um, I attended the board packet review meeting that was held this uh, last Tuesday. And uh, today I had the opportunity, I wasn't able to attend an ACE program session, but I did have the opportunity to visit with a special young man who told me that the greatest thing he learned today was that jumping, that spider, jumping spiders were spiders that jumped the highest and the furthest. And my reply to him was, well, they haven't seen me. And I think it just went right over his head, but that's okay. Uh, but he was excited to share that bit of information. Um, we look forward to the start of school. Uh, it's gonna be a great year this year for Seguin ISD, faculty, staff, and students. And we are all looking forward to get back into the swing of things where we can get back on campus and be a part of the everyday things that go on. I uh, attended the board workshop, and uh, that's about it so far this month. All right, I attended the, safe, uh, the Bond and Facilities Board Workshop. I completed the safety and security training. Um, I got to see that the um, final day of summer intercession, um, the science program at uh, TLU um, with the science mill, and also attended the performance of the um, summer intercession, the theater, um, which was the Lion King experience. July 6th, I attended the AJB construction meeting. July 19th, I attended the park workshop uh, for the bond proposal, you know, virtual. And I also completed the safety and security training. So I'm, I'm, I think we'll be getting busier as the year goes along, so we'll have one report yet. Uh, recognition of campus presentations. Good evening. It is an honor and privilege to introduce our uh, uh, Region 20 Deputy Executive Director, Dr. Carolyn Castillo, who has a very special award and honor for our Board of Trustees. message of recognition. I'd like to read the letter that um, you will receive tonight. It is with great pleasure that I congratulate you on being named the 2022 Regional School Board of the Year for Education Service Center Region 20. We are proud that you will be representing us at the state level and wish you the best of luck. This accomplishment is evidence of hard work and dedication of each of you that you've invested in your students, and in this community. Despite enduring significant challenges this year, you've never lost sight of your end goal, and that's clearing the path for student success. I commend you for engaging in the development of a three-year plan that will evolve through 2024-2025. The leadership afforded you by your superintendent has permitted you to work to improve academic achievement and offer new opportunities to the district. With unprecedented growth happening within Seguin ISD, your team is proactively preparing to ensure the state-of-the-art classroom space is available for current and future students. Your district provides a conduit for students to earn college credit while providing cost savings to family and students who are setting their goal toward a college degree. Thank you to your partnership with Alamo College's district Students have saved $1,399,000 in tuition cost while receiving college credit, including an associate's degree. Additionally, I applaud your efforts to offer a fall and spring intercession instructional calendar to provide focused instruction to students due to COVID learning loss. I do not doubt that your collaborative efforts will continue to provide innovative opportunities to all students. 
is advocates for public education. Board members help grow community support for public schools and report district progress by communicating with the community, students, staff, parents, and media. Your job is challenging, but serving as a, as a school board trustee carries much more significant burden than simply being a representative. You've represented your district in an exemplary manner, and now you'll be representing the region at the state level. I praise you for your ability to communicate your vision, focusing on what's best for all students, and advocating for public education at the local, state, and national levels. So on behalf of Region 20, congratulations on being named the 2022 Regional School Board of the Year. Board of Trustees, we will um, accept the award in front of our um, nice new backdrop. As our Board of Trustees is making their way back, uh, there are just a few words I'd like to share. Anytime I have an opportunity, I certainly brag on the board that we have. And for the past three years, I have shared with others that this will be an award-winning board. And I've, and I've said that for three years. And, and, and here we are celebrating and recognizing an award-winning board. Just some of the highlights I, I want to share are that the board went through about eight months of TASB exceptional governance training where the board worked in collaboration with the superintendent's leadership team to develop four very strategic superintendent evaluation goals that I am evaluated on every year. In addition to that, they have strongly supported our facilities planning, our strategic plan one and strategic plan 2.0 and that list goes on. And I just want to share that boards are not, this is not your typical board. This is a school board that is focused on one thing, and that is student achievement. There are no hidden or personal agendas. They just simply care deeply about our students and want what's best for them, and they want to see positive outcomes. It has been an absolute honor and privilege to work with this board for the past four years um, with some and, and five years with, with others. And I, I'm just proud every day when I have an opportunity to sit around the table with other superintendents and talk about my board, we certainly have a board that stands out. And for that, I'm thankful. And for that, we should all be thankful. So thank you, Board of Trustees. Next up on the 
agenda is audience with the board. The Seguin ISD Board of Trustees designates the time for audience participation at the beginning of each meeting. To your person to desire to make comments in accordance with board policy BED local. Those wishing to speak shall sign up before the meeting begins stating the concern or noting the agenda item they wish to address. Audience participation is limited to five minutes. The board shall not deliberate any subject that is not on the posted agenda. <coughs> Tonight we have Mr. Paul Martin signed up and his uh, topic is growth and donut economics. Mr. Martin, I am the timer tonight again. I'll give you a one minute warning. So. Okay, thanks a lot. Is this on? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Paul Martin, 605 L, uh, here in Seguin. Uh, you know, first of all, I have to uh, congratulate you, you folks. Uh, all of Seguin really should be proud of the work that y'all do. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to go continue to talk about uh, acting and educating towards slowing down growth. And I made this comment that I would do it in Portignol, my bad Portignol, but I'll do it in my bad English. I've been doing this sort of sustainability stuff for uh, about 50 years, I figured, uh, in different kind of ways. Uh, and did you know come up with this little book here recently so I'm kind of serious about this business on the other hand you know I'll be 76 in November and I figure I got about maybe 20 years uh, considering how long my mother left to live so uh, you know I'm not that serious about it uh, you just go to this uh, <coughs> oh it's donut economic I do have a prop here I you know, my class is, uh, it's hey, Phil, Phil, always grabbing props when I went to class. I had to have props, so uh, this is my prop tonight. I don't know. I'll eat it later, Glenda. Uh, I'm not going to give you one, uh, but no, maybe I will. Anyway, I got it. I know uh, I'll get cut off here real quickly, and I didn't practice this one. Uh, if you look at this, this donut here from uh, Kate Walworth, uh, British ecological economist, uh, inside it is what y'all are trying to address. You're, you're trying to address this growth and uh, of course growth increased needs and it exacerbates all of the outer bank boundary. If you look at the outer boundary, all those problems. So, you know, you're, you're dealing with education. Hopefully you're educating some of us and building education systems. We know you are that are conducive to uh, producing uh, good citizens. And I won't go into any more of that in the inside, other than just to mention that you know hopefully you're dealing with peace and justice and social equity and networking and, and even food. Uh, but it's the outer layer with eight billion people in the world, quite a few around here and growing. It's the outer layer with eight billion people, in, and and a, a big problem is here in this country. You know, as I've mentioned so many times before. We're using 250,000 kilocalories per capita per day, uh, whereas, say, in, in India or Haiti or Nicaragua, they're using closer to 20 to 40,000, 10 times less. So that's that's a concern. Uh, there's no doubt we have to deal with this growth. There's no doubt about it. Uh, well, maybe we'll leave it over to our kids, our grandkids, their grandkids, but I guarantee you, it's going to get a hell of a lot worse. So we need to start dealing with it now. Really get serious about it. I don't think we're that serious about it, truly. Good night. Thank you all for giving me these uh, three or four minutes, whatever it was. Thank you, sir. You bet. Thank you, Paul. <coughs> Up next is item four, introduction of newly appointed administrators. Good evening, President Thomas Jimenez, Dr. Gutierrez, and Board of Trustees. We have a few appointees that I would like to introduce. First up, we have Ms. Carly Tucker. Ms. Carly Tucker is a 2006 senior high school grad. Ms. Tucker has a diverse background and experience that makes her natural progression to middle school assistant principal at Barnes an asset to the campus leadership team. Ms. Tucker has experience as an elementary school teacher and most recently, Barnes Middle School counselor. Ms. Tucker's ability to build strong relationships with students, parents, and colleagues alike 
will prove essential in her new role. Please welcome Ms. Carly Tucker. been an honor watching you grow as as a leader from elementary counselor to middle school counselor and now in your new role as assistant principal next we have miss leslie mahaffey kennecke principal leslie is a transplant from new, new mexico but she would thought she was born and raised in manador miss mahaffey's instructional experiences range from early bilingual literacy at preschool in new mexico to a general education class at Jefferson Avenue Elementary, to reading interventionist at Kennedy Elementary, and most recently as the elementary coordinator here at Central Administration, where she has been instrumental in strengthening instructional practices at all our elementaries. Please welcome Ms. Leslie Mahaffey, Kennedy Elementary Principal. has solid experience as well as experience at Kennecke to ensure that they continue to move in a positive direction and just like Miss Tucker it, it has certainly been an honor and makes me proud to see Leslie grow into this role as the new Kennecke principal. Congratulations. Miss Trisha Eccles, McQueenie principal. She is one of our very own and has grown as a strong instructional leader through the ranks of Seguin ISD. Ms. Eccles has seen the gamut of instructional roles from team lead, trailblazer, to academic dean, to assistant principal, and now to principal. Ms. Eccles' positive influence at McQueenie is evidenced by the glowing feedback provided by teachers at McQueenie this past school year, as well as from their growth measures reported from the 2002 STAR State Assessment. Please welcome Ms. Trisha Eccles, McQueenie Elementary Principal. Thank you, Dr. Gutierrez, Board of Trustees, and Superintendent Leadership Team. I am forever grateful for all of you and your support throughout the years. Thank you to the amazing leaders I've had in this room who have guided me and invested heavily in each role that I have held here in Seguin. I am blessed and honored to continue serving the Sydney ISC community as McQueen Elementary Principal. I knew like way when I first uh, met Trisha back in 2017, she was a third grade teacher, that there was leadership potential there. And, and I am just so proud of the work that she has done in a variety of capacities. I'm just so proud of these three ladies. Um, tonight and, and it's just a testimony to the work that we're doing in Seguin ISD and the investment that we are making in our own talent and we're going to continue to invest heavily in our people and, 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 and those people who know our community the best are those who are here in the system. So congratulations you three again. I'm so proud. Christine Pettis is the new Director of School Leadership. She joins us from San Antonio ISD, where she was the principal of Poe STEM Dual Language Middle School, where she led a three-year improvement required campus to meeting standard in one year. Christine credits this transformation to daily classroom observation feedback cycles with her administrative team and a focus on cultural transformation and restorative practices. We look forward to Ms. Pettis 
coaching our principals to be their very best. Please welcome Ms. Christine Perez, Director of School Leadership. Good evening, Board of Trustees. Um, I've been very humbled and appreciative of the opportunity to be in Sigin ISD these last few weeks. What's been most exciting is all of the compassion and love and drive that we've seen our educators um, engaging in in conversation, uh, most recently today in the cultural components of teaching and learning, and then to see all of the highlights around student achievement and the district's involvement in whole child initiatives. And I look forward to serving the community of Sigin ISD. Thank you. One bit of information, we are so excited to have Ms. Bettis and she has already hit the ground running and is already meeting with, with principals and she will be an amazing principal coach. But it's, a, it, it's, it's interesting how things come full circle, but uh, I remember being a first year teacher and, and, and Christine Bettis being one of the first uh, teachers to come and, and welcome me to the campus uh, over 20 years ago. And, and really served as, as a mentor. She was a, an outstanding behavior unit teacher at that time, and, and she continued to grow and, and develop as a leader and, and continue to, to be just a, a strong educator, and we are so fortunate to have her here in Seguin ISD, and I never imagined that I would have an opportunity to work alongside Ms. Fettis again, but here we are today, and, and I'm excited. I guess you and Coach Daly are up next. Yes, if I can call Coach Daly up. Good evening. President Jimenez, Dr. G, and Board of Trustees, thank you for having us. Um, change, that's the one word I think that describes our town, our school, and our athletic program. Um, but all those changes are in a positive direction, I believe. I'm so excited about all the positive changes going on in this town, and uh, I want to say thank you all for all the hard work you all have done in the past, and you are currently doing for all our kids up to the team. Uh, appreciate you on that. Uh, the foundation of our athletic program uh, is to build a family of champions through trust, discipline, and doing their best. Through interviews, we look for individuals that will exemplify those core values in our young people of Seguin. Our goal was to create a diverse staff that understands the importance of building relationships with students of different backgrounds. Our athletic staff includes eight TLU graduates and 12 Seguin High School graduates, and I'm so excited <laughs> that this group of people have chose this is the place they want to be. They are ready to push the students of Seguin, Texas to accomplish things that they never thought they could achieve through hard work and doing things the right way. And some of them are here tonight, and I'd like to introduce y'all to uh, a few of them uh, when I call your name, sometimes it's uh, the way for them. All right, first up, this is her second year in education. Uh, she's gonna teach math at the high school. She's gonna coach girls basketball, and uh, second sport to be determined. We're still putting the puzzle pieces together. Uh, she graduated from Texas A&M Corpus. Uh, she's coming from Pearsall. Leonor Alejandro. Uh, this next gentleman is 17th year of education. He's going to teach social studies, coach football, and boys soccer. Um, he's from El Paso. He graduated from UTEP with an a undergrad and a master's. He's actually moving up from the Barnes Middle School, Chris Rodriguez. gentleman he's in his fifth year um, he was previously the coordinator at HAB uh, he's going to coach football on track teach social studies a UTSA grad Clifford Cruz uh, front straight out of college I think she graduates next week I don't think she's graduated yet to be honest um, she went to Willis High School where she actually played for our new volleyball coach and she's just now getting done uh, playing at Sam Houston State University. She's gonna teach CTE, uh, Dejanae Gilmore. <laughs> All right, um, a 
couple of other people that are not here in her first year. She's coming. She's going to be assistant girls soccer. Uh, she's from graduated from UTSA. She's going to uh, teach Spanish. She's also a first year coach. Sylvia, Sylvia Villa Sonor. She's not here with us tonight. Um, another one not here tonight is Daniel Perez. He's coming from us from uh, Wagner. He's a sped teacher. He's going to do volleyball and girls basketball. All right, to some of the locals. All right, and by the way, I when uh, Carly was our uh, student manager of baseball, all right, the last time I coached her, so I'm getting old that uh, I actually coached her or taught her the last time I was here, and now she's an assistant principal, so starting to show my age. All right, uh, this next one, she's our fifth year of education. Uh, she's going to teach sped. She's going to coach volleyball and softball. She's a graduate of Seguin and Texas State, Jessica Aguilar. Okay, second year teaching, he's teaching SPED, he's gonna do football and a second sport to be determined. Uh, also a graduate of Seguin High School uh, and Texas State, he's coming from Dripping Springs, uh, Joseph Castillo. Okay, uh, ninth year in education. She's a graduate of Seguin and TLU. Uh, she's, come, she's been in SAISD. She's going to be at Barnes doing girls basketball and girls soccer. Valerie Flores. <laughs> Fifth year in education. Uh, going to teach science, football, and boys basketball. Uh, graduate of Seguin High School in Texas a and Kingsville. Coming from Luling, Caleb Applewhite. She's not here tonight, but she's also a graduate of Seguin and Texas Lutheran. She's going to do girls basketball, teach English, Jesse B. Hall. Okay, now we have a couple of uh, promotions at the middle school. Um, the twin brothers, uh, they're both graduate of Texas Lutheran University. Okay, uh, let's make sure I get these right. I hope that I don't mess them up. Trevor Roberts will be the coordinator at AJB. And Travis Roberts all right, will be the coordinator at Barnes. All right, one of them is usually clear and shaven, and one is not, so I can tell now the one's all here. If not, I just call them Roberts and they both answer. So. All right. Okay, so now for our new head coaches. Uh, this first gentleman uh, has been in education. Uh, he's going to teach so for a few years. He's been in, uh, he's going to teach social studies. Um, he's had a head coach. The previous spots at Elgin and Taylor. Um, he's a graduate of Texas A&M Commerce with his master's from Lamar. He's also highly active in the, the Tasco State Soccer Organization. He's going to be our head girls soccer coach, Daryl Fox. Okay, next one is the fourth year in education. Um, he's a graduate of Seguin High School, a graduate of Texas A&M Kingsville, uh, he's been working the last four or uh, three years at Kingsville High School. Uh, our new head baseball coach, Mike Gonzalez. Uh, next one, uh, 27th year education. She's going to be working with uh, our English um, kids in the flex school. So the kids are in some part of recovery. Uh, his previous head coaching stints at San Marcos and Clemens in the area. She's a graduate of Texas A&M where she was a four-year letterman, right, Coach? Yes. Okay, four-year letterman in bat girls basketball. She's going to be our head girls basketball coach, Veranda Kendall. Uh, and we have two uh, head coaches that are not here tonight. Uh, one, he's been uh, the middle school golf coach, and we promoted much of the head golf coach at the high school, um, Rick. Rick Camacho, so he'll be joining, he'll be moving up from the middle school up to the high school. And then our new assistant AD, head volleyball coach that played at UT Arlington. She's been a head coach at Willis at Magnolia. I believe y'all met her last time, uh, Ashley Ferris. Um, but that's the new, uh, the new staff at the high school and some at the middle school. We're excited to uh, work with the kids this evening. Uh, thank you for recognizing them tonight. Um, and we look forward to seeing y'all in all the competitions.
welcome to the Matador family. We're really glad to have you on board. We're going to break shortly so that we have an opportunity to, to meet you all. Um, so if you'll just hang out with us just a few minutes longer. Thank you. Thank you. And with that said, we're going to recess for 15 minutes so we can hang, hang out with you and shake some hands and visit with you for a few minutes. And the public can too. We will reconvene for closed session at 720. I didn't want to say wow. I'd like to thank everybody for sticking around and uh, getting to meet, meet all of y'all. Uh, we will go to item number five now, closed session. The board will adjourn in the closed session. Pursuant to the following sections of the Texas Open Meetings Act, 5A, pursuant to Texas Government Code, section 55.1071. 551.074, 551.129, consultation with the legal counsel, including possible telephone consultation with legal counsel if necessary to address legal concerns, implications, and answer any legal questions regarding closed agenda items. 5A1, emergency operations and safety protocols. And then 5B, pursuant to Texas Government Code, discuss personnel matters, including appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, dismissal of the employees. 5C, pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.072, discuss the sale, purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property. And we will go into closed session at 721. All right, we're ready to convene to open meeting. There's no possible action at this time. So we'll move on to item, agenda item number seven, consent agenda items. Consider and possible approval is applicable. Policy, uh, approval of policy B, local states, and consent agenda item. Agenda shall include items of routine or recurring nature grouped together under one action item. All such items shall be acted upon by one vote without separate discussion, unless a board member requests that an item be withdrawn for individual consideration. The remaining items shall be adopted under a single motion and vote as applicable. Does any board member have any items they would like to pull from the consent agenda? All right, so 7A, approval board minutes, a special meeting June 23rd, 2022, public meeting June 28th, 2022, and regular meeting June 28th, 2022. 7B, approval of investment report of the fourth quarter ended June 30th, 2022. 7C, approval of investment report for the year ended June 30th, 2022. 7D, approval of district-wide facilities, maintenance, electrical equipment, parks and service, RFP number 21-04. 7E, approval of property, liability, and fleet insurance 2022 to 2023. 7F, consideration of approval of certified appraisers for 2022-2023. 7G, first reading for consideration or approval of most local district update. LDU AD. 7H, approval of credit by exam dates for 2022 and 2023. 7i, information regarding seeking ISD purchase of technical assistance support from West App Incorporated. 7j, information regarding purchases through the Buy Board Purchasing Cooperative for a total cost of $170,900. 7k, information regarding seeking ISD, seeking ISD purchase of free bond conceptual designs from PB Group LLC. 7L, information regarding purchases through the Omnia Partners Purchasing Cooperative for a total cost of $243,858. 7M, information regarding purchases through the DIR Purchasing Cooperative for a total cost of $266,507. 7N, information regarding purchases through the Choice Partners Purchasing Cooperative for a total cost of $72,500. 7O, information regarding an interlocal agreement with communities and schools for integrated student support, ISS. 7P, personnel information, professional employees. 7Q, acknowledgement, acknowledge public information act request for June through July 2022. And that's it. So. Do I have a make a motion to approve consent items 
7A to 7Q. Mr. Gannon, I move to approve the uh, consent items. Do I have a second? Mr. Amador has a second. A vote. Raise your right hand and vote approval. The motion passes. Uh, the city, city voted 7 0. <laughs> Moving on to action items 8A. Review of the 2021 2022 optional flexible school day program and approval of the 2023 action. Approval of the 2022 application for Seguin High School and the Bluebird Learning Center at Sacred. So, up for that is Dr. Eskimo. Obviously, uh, just in a nutshell, flexible school day allows students who uh, otherwise would probably not be able to attend school to attend school on a half-time basis. Uh, they be able to have a job, help their families. Some of our students are parents. So it allows them to come to school at an inflexible schedule and then complete their credits for high school. That's really what it is. There is a system of application. You don't just take anybody. They have to petition uh, with the families to get into the program. And of course, if they go through the counseling component, um, they go through the interview process, and then we put them in the program. So we're servicing anywhere between 50 to 75 students a year. Uh, and you'll find out this year, uh, it lowered. The numbers are lower because, and that's good, because that's, there's less demand for optional flexible school day, meaning they're going through the regular school process or traditional school. So uh, during COVID, we saw a spike after COVID. It was natural, a lot of kids needed credits. So uh, now it's kind of fizzled down a little bit, which is good because our students are now taking the more traditional route. Even though if they need this, it's open for them. Again, it's another opportunity, similar to MVLC, uh, that we have on the campus that our students can take it down with. So I wanted to talk about, just review real quick, uh, what happened this year in the program. So we had 490 total credits earned by students in the flexible school day program. That was over the, the course of the whole year. 58 of our students graduated from the optional flexible school day program for the class of 2022. That's 58 students, guys, that may not have made it if they weren't in this program. So our graduation class would have been 58 lower. This is why these programs are important. So the work that they're doing in there with Michelle Avalos and all of our teachers is amazing to get these kids. Sometimes they go in there with 14 credits and Lo and behold, by the end of the year or the following school year, they're ready to graduate. So we get them there. Uh, it's a challenge, I'm not gonna lie to you, but our teachers work very hard and they instill that they can do this. That this is part of being in the program and we're really happy for these 58 students. So, um, we had 69 students enrolled in the FSD program. Some of them will carry over for this year. Uh, they, are, they were juniors and they're gonna be seniors this year. So, uh, that's an overview of the program that we have. So we talked about the uh, application process. Uh, obviously, we have to apply to TEA. Uh, Mr. Cantu's team uh, works uh, with us uh, to uh, go ahead and apply uh, for this grant. It's kind of grant, uh, and then they approve it after our public meeting that we have tonight. So, so um, this is, I've already explained the process. You can't just get into the program because you want to. There's gotta be a process. First of all, they don't go in until the end of a grading period because we can't, we don't have a way to match up what they currently have in their classes and in flexible students. So uh, there's a process of getting in. All, most of our students that are juniors and seniors are very aware of this program. A lot of them have siblings that have gone through the program. So they want to get in, but sometimes they want to get in for the wrong reasons. So we do have to say no because there are kids that need more than kids that just don't want to be in the traditional school anymore. They don't need a lot of needs. So uh, we convince those students that maybe go to MDLC or keep going. And sometimes it works out. But, 
So uh, just to kind of uh, talk about the numbers again, 69 students enrolled, 490 credits earned at 58 graduates for the flexible school day program this past school year. Does anybody have any questions? I just um, thank you all for your continued efforts to meet the needs of, of these students who experience a lot of challenges um, at home and, and, and also want to just express uh, how appreciative I am of Ms. Avalos and, and the work that she does and, and, and her ability to connect with these kids uh, also helps to, to contribute to ensuring that they, they graduate from high school. Yes, and you definitely have to have the right people there. And this year we're putting uh, some stronger coaches that we know are going to help the kids uh, get to where they need to get at. So, uh, yes, uh, definitely uh, we've always, even with Ms. Biddings with the, at the high school, we had the right person there that was going to be able to get to see it through. So that's important. Is 69 usually around the number that is enrolled? So we, the, we apply to up to 75 students. So that's the max that, that we'll do. Okay. Uh, 69 was the amount of students that were in the program this year. Like I said, the prior year, we actually went over. And uh, me and Bill Lewis have talked about this. We had 98 students in there because of COVID. Obviously, there was a lot of students that were behind. So uh, this past year, we had less students in there than the 75. And, we, and they were serviced pretty well. So, uh, And it wasn't that we turned anybody away. That was the number of students that had a five the program. Someone listening or, or watching this might might ask, what's the difference between the Flexible Day program and MBLC? So MBLC uh, takes you to another campus. Obviously, uh, it's a different campus with a different uh, school code. So our program, they can still participate in CCE. They can still participate in athletics if they have their credits. They can still take advantage of the entire, uh, what the high school has to offer. So that, that's the big difference. They're still part of the campus. Uh, they participate in pep rallies. They go to the lunches that are regular students. They're just in the flexible school day program, and they come to school at hours. So that, that it's basically, if you want to go separately from the high school and just be in a smaller environment, or stay at the high school in a small environment, but still take advantage of the entire campus. That's the way I would describe it. Thank you. Well, thank you, sir. Any other questions? So I have a little story, and I was telling it earlier. Uh, we were here about six years ago, I think, and we were gonna present at the time that it was Bill Lewis, we were gonna present the optional flexible school day in a public hearing. And the room was full. And I'm like, they're here to listen to this? Or I told Sean Hoffman, I said, what's going on? They're here to listen to the optional flexible school day. I don't know, the new superintendent sitting over there. It was Dr. G. <laughs> <laughs> so it would have been like this. Thank you very much, guys, for supporting Siggy Nice School. You're definitely supporting an amazing program that you know that works. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you all. All right, board, we have a, a motion to approve the application. Mr. Amador has moved to approve the application, the 2022-23 application for Skeen High School at Bloomberg Bloomberg Learning Center, and has been seconded, seconded by Ms. Duncan. We shall vote. All in favor, raise your right arm hand. The motion passes 7-0. Yes. I'd like to come visit. I think we'd like to come visit and sure. see it sometime now that we can get back on campuses and see what it looks like. Absolutely. I mean. They're right there by the weight room. So come on down. <laughs> You'll enjoy seeing We need an invitation. You know what? We need an invitation. <laughs> I'm ready to see everything. <laughs> All right, so item 8B, adopt the resolution for assignment of fund balance. Mr. Hilbert, you're up. President Jimenez, uh, Dr. Gutierrez, members of the board, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, we have an item that we bring on a fairly regular basis requesting an assignment of balance. In this case, it's uh, two categories of items. One is, uh, it says say football helmets, but it's actually a little bit more than that. It's, it's some football helmets as well as shoulder pads. Um, and just so you know, 
the uh, the helmets themselves are it's a component of a multitude of things, and so. Um, it, it's it's all of the things associated with the various types of helmets that are needed. So twenty thousand for the football safety gear, and then the special ed department is expanding a little bit in terms of staff, and they need furniture to be housed primarily here in the central office, and um, we've exhausted all of the recycled furnishings that we could possibly recycle. So. At this point, we're obligated to buy something that these new staff members are going to have a place to sit and operate. And I just want to say that it is certainly long overdue, um, and you know, most of you all have not had the opportunity to go into that part of the building. But um, you know, when we talk about retaining, you know, part of that working environment is important, and it is just long overdue uh, to to update uh, the furniture in that department. And then as far as the uh, football equipment, you know, we're really proud that uh, our programs are growing um, pretty quickly under Coach Daly's leadership. And we're, we're not only seeing growth, but we're seeing that we're retaining kids. And so there's a need um, for, for these dollars to be able to keep up with, with the demand, as well as ensure that the equipment is safe is this equipment across the board, or is it just high school, or is it middle school as well? It, it's varsity is what I saw on the PO information, but um, there's not a whole lot of detail about the PTOs. I'm not sure if you're aware of it. It's, it's, um, it's going to be across different levels. Um, we're seeing kids staying with athletics as they're going into high school as freshmen. We're seeing the number of kids in middle school grow as well, and obviously varsity too, so it's going to cover uh, different levels of the wall. They have 110 freshmen coming in. I just had a quick question. So, has there been any improvements on the actual construction of the helmets? Have they been safer throughout the years? Are you aware of, or like the new ones compared to the old ones? I would assume just because of wear and tear, you know, it's going to be better than what they're using now. Well, there's a there's a. Uh, it's, it's a highly regulated process of maintaining the safety of those elements that is tested on a regular basis. I'm not familiar with all the technicalities of it, but uh, I do know that the helmets have a lifespan and they have to be uh, examined and, and registered for safety. So even the older ones have to pass those inspections. And then after a certain number of years, you need to put them out of commission? Yes. On the furniture, you said that was for central office? For the special education department that has expanded over the years to meet the demand. And the majority of that is actually cubicle based. Um, and just across the hallway here, you'll, you'll notice they, they started that uh, a few years back. And, and this will uh, um, marry up to that product. It, it's the same product to go actually in the same area. Now there are some other things that they're also adding that are not in that area, but the bulk of this cost is associated with the additional vehicles that they need to add. Any other questions? Hearing none, do I have a motion? <laughs> Mr. Hoffner moves to uh, us for the adoption of the resolution of assignment of fund balance and it was seconded by Ms. Moreno. Uh, with the vote, you should raise your right hand to support. That's the 7-0. I didn't see Cindy. Thank you, Mr. Hilbert. Thank you. Item 8C, designate official voting delegate and alternate for the 2022 TASB Delegate Assembly in San Antonio, Texas on September 23rd and 25th. I was informed that we have Ms. Glenda Moreno, primary, and Denise Crittenden, as secondary. My motion has um, was moved by Ms. Linda Duncan and seconded by Mr. Amador. All in favor, raise your right hand. The motion passes 7-0. And then uh, board comments and requests. Does any board member have any comments or requests for future board meetings? 
Terry Bunn. <laughs> Mr. Omar moves to adjourn and seconded by Ms. Moreno. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you for everybody for being here.